Alright, I just want to come on here and make a little quick video. This is going to be soft spoken because I'm in my car and I, I cannot really whisper right now because I don't have my Yeti mic, so this is why I'm just doing soft spoken. I'm going to be reading through a book that is called The Bible in 52 Weeks. It's a year long Bible study for women. So, week one, there's nothing too hard for God. My purpose is to encourage the encourager today while you focus on the needs of those around you. Remember that God has not forgotten about you. He hears your prayers and remembers your heart's desires and struggles. He posed a question to Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? And the answer is that there is absolutely nothing too hard for God. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. There is nothing you could think of or ask that God cannot do. In the story of Sarah and Abraham, God told Abraham, that he would make him a great nation, and from him all the families of the earth would be blessed. This promise probably didn't make sense to Abraham at the time, because he and Sarah had no children, and well, into their senior years, they thought they were too old. In chapter 16, Sarah still hadn't had a child yet, so she took matters into her own hands, and decided that Abraham should sleep with her maid, Hagar. Abraham and Hagar had a son named Ishmael. God allowed it, but he did not ordain it. You must be mindful that when it comes to the promises of God, you shouldn't take matters into your own hands. In chapter 18, God made Abraham and Sarah a specific promise, one that didn't make sense. The odds were against them because of their age. Abraham was a hundred and Sarah was ninety years old. By this time, it had been thirteen years since God made his original promise in chapter twelve, and they hadn't seen no signs of their earlier promise. What do you do when we, you've waited so long and somebody is telling you that the impossible is still possible? What do you do? And the promise just doesn't make sense. You've got to decide in your heart not to give in to the doubt. I know that's easier said than done. I've had to learn the hard way that doubt and hinders the progress to your promise. It paralyzes you and keeps you stagnant. It makes you want to take control rather than trust God with your life. However, when you replace doubt with faith, you give God something to work with. It's easier to be skeptical when the odds are against you, but I encourage you to trust God to keep his word. You, when you replace doubt with faith, trust that God will do his part and release the blessing. You have to, you have to believe that there is absolutely nothing too hard for God to do. There's some questions to ponder. Number one, when you were faced with an impossibility, how did you handle it? After this lesson, how will you handle those impossibilities going forward? Number two, what has this lesson taught you about your faith? Number three, what areas have you discovered where you are strong in faith? What areas have you discovered where your faith needs to be strengthened? And number four, after this lesson, what are some impossibilities that you will commit to prayer? And some actions for the week. Number one, decide in your heart to think and speak positively. Replace the negative words with positive ones. Number two, make a commitment to yourself to intentionally respond to your doubts with declarations of faith. And number three, at the end of the week, note how speaking positively into your life 
This began to have a good impact on your outlook and ability to trust God. So, that's it. That's the lesson for the week and for the day. And I hope that you all find a blessing in this video. And have a blessed week in Jesus' name.